All right, we wrap with Roycey every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday here on Mackie and Judd. Pat, how would you – look at you, by the way, with your – you got your Prince Good hat. Baby. They tell me that guy was a pretty good guitar player. He was. Yeah, he was. Pretty good. Outlaw country. I never, I never hear about outlaw country. Yeah, I know. What's going on with that? He yeah. was, Some of his best stuff was the uh, instrumental guitar playing. Uh, was it that – what was the band he had before he became big? Like I-94 or something in the late 70s? There's some yeah. good stuff there. Yeah, good stuff. Well, that's, well, yeah, everybody who knows anything about music loves him. Johnny Height, who's the all-time expert, thinks he's one of the all-time greats. So that's yep. all I got. That's all I got to go how, by. How would you handle so Byron Buxton last night? Three extra base hits, a couple more home runs. Uh, he actually might still wind up with twenty home runs if he can if he can hit a couple over the weekend here, despite missing almost all of the season. At first, well, how, when he hit last night, oof, that yeah. Was, I was smoked. <laughs> How would you? All right, you're you got the keys to the front office, and uh, now you're talking to Buxton's agent. He's got one year left, and he wants to get paid. How do you handle it? I made this admission to Falvey after he did his little session yesterday. I, I was talking to him for a couple of minutes, and I said, "You guys are in the worst predicament with a player in the history of baseball." Yeah, because. <laughs> When he plays, you win, but he doesn't play. <laughs> so, I mean, what do you do? I, it, it's there is no answer. If you let him go, and uh, by the way, I see uh, Sue Ann was suggesting it's David Ortiz. Well, David Ortiz was, you know, this guy's older and been around a lot longer than Ortiz was, right? Yeah, this so, guy's already this guy's breaking out with the Twins. Ortiz isn't he? Really... Yeah, plus isn't Brooks Bucks and he going to be what twenty seven? Yep. Yeah. 27. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I do. You, 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 there's a big threat of being an idiot either way, right? If you, if you give him a hundred million dollars and he plays as usual, uh, 40% of the season, you're idiots, right? And if, if this, he, but if this was a different organization that wasn't like, so, so they, so they let Barrios go, they traded Barrios. Right. I almost feel like by doing that, they just have to commit to a hundred some million dollars and pray, right? How high do you go though? What if he says? What if he says I'm not going to take a hundred? I I can't give him, I can't give him, you know, twenty five million a year for six years and not know if he's going to play or not. Uh, He's, uh, I, I was shocked uh, when he fouled the ball off his foot the other day and he didn't miss a month. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, there's not a month to miss. So he actually, <laughs> yeah, he actually came back and played the next night in the eighth inning or so. And then he's been playing ever since, but, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's an impossible situation to have to have the right answer for, but, uh, I think they're trying to sign him, but I, they offered him 70 and he laughed at that. And then I think 80 and he laughed at that, but. If it gets much over a hundred, I can't do it. I'm sorry. What what do you think? I think he I think he would take right now one hundred over seven years. And the oh, issue I don't think he no, you're not, not over seven. seven. Not over five seven. Or seven. seven. You might get five. Five, yeah. get five. So but the problem is this if you if you gamble that he's gonna get hurt in two thousand twenty two, if we have one and you don't sign him, I think he I think he walks. So, oh, God, so oh, hell, you, you're never going to sign him on the open market. You're going to no, but I I don't think you're I don't think once 2022 starts when it starts that you that he's going to stay. So I think your window to sign him is this winter, and then it's going to close. I agree with that. Yeah, I I think that uh, and and you never get as much for position players during a season right. as you do during an off season. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a horrible situation for them to, I mean, it's good to have a player that talented. I think we talked about this, Phil, though, previously. He's 27, right? So you commit to him. Is he going to be as fast at 30? The speed right. is so much of his game. Yep. What if he's, what if he loses? Ha- I mean, Kirby Puckett was never a burner, but like, no. but I think, where I would probably just swallow hard and and accept the the lack of speed. If you move him from center field to right field when he's 30 years old, he'll be the best defensive right fielder in the game for the rest of his contract because he'll be faster. I mean, think about some of the right fielders that are plodding around in Major League Baseball. So, 
uh yeah it's uh it's you know they want to sign him they know that they're going to get killed if they don't and he goes and becomes a great player but do you really think he's ever going to play i guess what what's the number you need 130. i was going to say 120. 130 right you can you can pencil him in for a month off and he's still going to be the most valuable player on the team well yeah they win when he plays and they don't win when he doesn't play and he makes you better he makes you, as I say, 20% better in the field, yep. which makes your pitching 20% better. Yes. And he makes your he makes your hitting 20% better. And he makes your base running 75% better because you don't have any other athletes. It's I think the I other take, thing. I think I take the gamble because you're not going to replace him. And second of all, you're not going to go out find a guy who is even comparable to him on the market that you and, can sign. And so right I think now, it's like, worth and and right now he's on. better than he's ever been yep. as a hitter. He's now yes. He's now a competent hitter. He's I don't think you're going to see you might see a week when he's flailing and taking strike one down the middle of the plate and then striking out and fouling ball. You'll see a week of that, but you're not going to see weeks after weeks of that. He's uh it you know, to me, the guy they got to figure out what to do with to get move in some way is Kepler. See if there's any market for him because there's there's no value there anymore. This is great. Uh, this is a greater mystery than anything else on this team to me. That he can't. That he's a 210 hitter. That's how, weird. how did this happen? How did it happen? He's yeah. an athlete. He has a good swing, and it's not just left-handers. He can't hit anybody. He's <laughs> he'll have you know, five days, six days, seven days, and you'll say, ah, but, but, you know, it's, I, I don't know what happened to him. I have no idea. So what is, cause the, this is, this is such a huge off season. They've, you know, they've got these guys like Kepler and I know Miguel Sano wound up with 30 home runs, but he was completely absent for the first two and a half months while they were, you know, desperately trying to stay relevant. So you have to make a bunch of decisions on guys in their late twenties that you've brought up and are they part of the next three years? Are you going to trade them? You got to fill out three or four spots in a rotation. You got, I mean, Josh Donaldson was fine, but you know, he's, you didn't sign Josh Donaldson to be going into this question mark year in year three. So are they looking, do you think they're looking at this as a rebuild or are they going to try and actually compete to win a division next year? Uh, well, I think they realize that the White Sox, even though the White Sox have not been as good as, Everybody thought the second half of the schedule, the, the season, they're still, they start next year with a 15 game talent gap, right? Yeah. At least, even if they make a lot of improvements. So I don't know. They, they can't come out and say, yeah, we, if you thought this was bad, wait till next year, you know, you can't say that. But you just look at it and say, you know, they, they do have the little bit after re blowing up their bullpen, which they didn't have to blow up and turning it into a disaster. If, if the other thing is Rogers and Duffy, both free agents, you know, at the end of next year. And so if there, there is the, if Duffy Rogers comes back, there's a remnants of a bullpen there with Benaya and Alcala and, uh, and Colome. Yeah, 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 right. Rogers. Uh, yeah, he's Gar. You got steel bar. He's Kirk Cousins pre twenty 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 one. Mister Garbage Time. <laughs> he's Mister Garbage Time. But no, there's about five or six guys that you can, you know, steel bar had a fantastic year, and uh, you know, if you got Duffy Rogers, the two young guys that throw hard, steel bar, you you get about six, and then you just everything else revolves around it. But starting wise. You know, they're counting on Joe Ryan, who uh, was uh, very fallible last evening, and Baylor, Bailey Ober, without Maeda, they're your one-two going yeah. into next year. Mm -hmm. So, until yep. you get somebody mm -hmm. to add it. So. And the, the, uh, the uh, five Fowies a little sit down yesterday with the local ball writers uh, kind of admitted they're going to have to take a hard look at the one-year options that, uh, mm -hmm. that they've that they tried to thrive on uh, so yeah you know but uh, yeah it's a but, but but when we say they're gonna go get pitching well 
what, they're not going to hit the market and spend $150 million to bring in three different guys. They just let Barrios go, for God's sake. So, right. Well, I, and, I, and I don't know how active things are going to be during the no. winter based on the uncertainty. I, I mean, that the uh, what collective bargaining it, agreement expires it, on December 1st. So yes. there's a very good chance that are around up until then and, and then probably past then we're going to have zero movement. Yeah, because the new you don't know if the new rules apply immediately or not. You know, yep. but there's going to be the, uh, you know, I th I think that they're either going to lose a year of free agency. They're certainly going to lose the uh, comp, you know, the compensation for a for signing a guy and uh, and you know, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's it's totally up in the air. So, I I think it's a it's a Europe, we we could say they should do this, they should do this, but as you point out, they don't even have the rules yet. They don't know what they're doing. All right, I will fully admit that I loved this signing when they made it, but Andrelton Simmons is slugging two seventy five, <laughs> slugging two seventy. <laughs> Just so you guys know, like a like an an average slugging percentage in baseball is like if you can slug around like four, you know. 30 or something like all right he's 150 points below like the acceptable line yes according he to does. Fangraphs, he's been worth if you were to just replace him with like a triple a player you would have gained a full win this season over andrelton simmons output uh and they're gonna have to bring somebody like andrelton simmons back in next year because they don't have a shortstop royce lewis is injured I asked him, is, is Nick Gordon a shortstop? And he, I says, what do you have to, see, what do you have to do between now and next spring if there's a spring training to, to decide that he's a shortstop? And he basically said he was a, Falvey basically said he's a utility player. So, yeah. so okay. he's not your shortstop. And you're not going to put Polanco back there. Polanco had a really good year playing second base, and that's his position, right? And uh, you got to, Arise is an interesting situation for them because he should be in the lineup, but you got Donaldson and you're not going to be able to move him. So you got the you got the big fellas on the corner. I I guess he's just going to have to be an extra player. But you need a shortstop. They got yep. it. Maybe you trade. Who? Maybe you trade Arise for a shortstop. I don't know. I don't know. I think or you just sign Martin. one again. I'm at, at this point in time. It's not. It's not like they're going to win. Like you, you know what I say? You might what say would they are Prince mean. do? What would Prince do? What would Prince do? He'd play the guitar and sing <laughs> yes. about it. I don't have a shortstop. Um, so, so I didn't watch the game last night, Patrick, because I watched uh, football and hockey because I'm crazy. But I did watch the pregame show, and I'm here to tell you by going to the Twins pretty, game, uh, pretty spiffy, you, pretty you, positive. You God. missed BSN, and it's BS best. <laughs> Reminiscing, reminiscing about the <laughs> Mauer, the Mauer catching for a last hurrah like three or four, four years back. And then as Declan tweeted about, this was the best part going through the panelists. What was your favorite memory of the 2021 twin season? <laughs> they should have said Perk, they made him do it. The poor Perk. I talked to Perk for 15 minutes before the game and he had, he was stuck with the having spinner positively, huh? He was wow. there like, like yeah, so what, what, was, was I, what is my favorite memory? Yeah, we should, let's go around the room. Let's go around the room. All right, let's start with Pat. What was your what was your favorite memory of the 2021 well, well, next? In a, it doesn't have to be positive, right? Mm. Theirs yeah. did, yours doesn't. I mean, you're favorite. you're the one who has to answer to BSN brass after this is over. So <laughs> my pattern, the pattern for this season was established on opening day in Milwaukee. When your new closer had a three run lead going into the bottom of the ninth and used that mighty brain power of his to try to get a force out at second instead of throwing first <laughs> to yeah, get the I'm out. Dying. And right then I said, I just saw my grandson's 10 year old game, and none of those guys would have made that <laughs> idiotic play. And right then I said, this guy's going to be a disaster. And uh, I, I guess that's that's my number one memory. Alex Colomay throwing to second base with a three-run lead. <laughs> Jeff, what was your favorite memory? Uh, 2021. It's a compilation of Rocco 
consistently trying to tell us how things were going to turn around and how you had to battle okay. and, and how great guys were and things like Andrelton Simmons, you don't understand how much he helps our young pitchers being out there. So we can't possibly not play He's him. Helping so much. Well, you know what? His home address is Jupiter, though. For that, which oh is, yeah. Well, you know, o- opening <laughs> opening day at home w- when they were going through for for the vaccines, and he said, "I'm all good. Don't worry about me." <laughs> and then in July, he tweeted, "Basically, you're a moron to get the vaccine." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, you kind of stole my. I was going to go with, you know, I can't remember which of the 73 pitchers the Twins have trotted out there, but one of them got rocked and gave up like seven or eight runs or something, but he, but he stuck around for like four or five innings, which is, this is a guardianism too, where yeah. a guy gives it all up in the first two innings and then kind of hangs in there. Mm-hmm. And instead of giving up 10, he holds them to seven. <laughs> and Rocco gave the impassioned, you know, this is the type of fight that we need to show, et cetera. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with uh, the Lord and Savior of Twins power hitting history. Uh, if you, if if you read certain Twins writers, he should be right up there among the Harmon Killebrews of Twins greatness. And man, when the Twins were 16 games behind first place in the division, two months into the season, this guy woke up right at the right time, Miguel Sano. What a season uh, for Miguel Sano. Except I'd say it was about the middle of August, wasn't it, when he actually woke up? Probably. Yeah, yeah you're probably the pressure right. pressure was firmly <laughs> off, by the way, by yeah. the time he woke up. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's uh, – that's Yeah, he hit, he hit 111 in April and 190 in May. And then <laughs> and then somebody poked him and said, hey, <laughs> it's, uh, it's middle of summer. Uh, here, yeah, he's uh, – well, it's terrible. Speaking of vaccine, I'm going to get the boost in about an hour here. So, hey, wow, nice good being for old, man. Nice yeah, I want my boost. Times, I right? want my boost. I don't trust my J and J now. I'm getting a little okay. nervous. <laughs> no, your J and J is good. You're, you're, you're well, good J. luck with the jab, the poke. I did discover one thing this morning, though, before Sheep. I came on. Not only is my wife an expert on housewives from everywhere, she's an absolute scholar on Gold Rush, on Discovery. What's oh, Gold really? Rush? Okay. I've heard of Gold Rush. I can tell you about the little conflicts taking place among the guys moving. The, they're up in Alaska trying to find gold. And so we're still, we're still looking for... Very okay. competitive. And I said, how did this happen? How, the, what the, how do you know about Gold Rush, for God's sake? What's wrong with you? So, I'll tell you, Pat. There's a, there's a four-part, I believe it's the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Not a one-part finale. Oh, oh, not a not a two-part finale. A four-part finale for this one. Why is is, uh, is your is your bride ready for that one? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. we're talking like <laughs> drama expect, on drama. We expect fireworks beyond belief because the uh, one who is rich, who's lived this real rich life, has got the crook for a lawyer or husband. The husband, yeah. Who's claiming Alzheimer's? He forgets how he cheated everybody. So. <laughs> That's very, very smart. But now he, ha- now he has to play it out, Larry David style, for the rest of his life and like be in a home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good curb episode. The one I don't I'm get Alzheimer's. The one I don't get that Don <laughs> loves is, is below deck. Do, do you guys oh, I don't like okay. him? I've dabbled. I've dabbled. Yeah. In on, uh, below deck. I mean it By is the just way, crap. You all want to wish a happy birthday to Mrs. Ricey tomorrow, but we won't exactly throw out the year, but uh, happy okay. birthday. And today it's got a round number. It's got a round number. Wow. And, wow. and today Rodney Klein Carew turned seventy six. Yes, he and I are the same age, uh, damn near. And uh, as I pointed out to him, when he's walking around, you know, after the heart transplant, if you'd only taken care of yourself, like, <laughs> exactly, stayed he's not in drinking. Fine he's not... physical condition, you wouldn't have these problems. You shouldn't have been out carousing in your youth. He's not drinking enough Diet Coke for breakfast. <laughs> yes, right. Why'd you let what yourself hell? go, Rodney? Yes, what the hell? You're up two, three pounds now, Rodney. Uh, all right, official prediction of oh. Vikings or Browns? I like the Brownies by three because right. everybody's too giddy. Everybody's too giddy after life. I think the Browns are really good. and uh, They are. But, uh, you know, the crowd could help. As Judd points out, maybe Baker Mayfield will lose his composure. Who knows? Yeah, but I, we'll I like the Browns. Browns are a better team than the Vikings, I think. So. Yeah, we'll see. All right. they are better team. There he is, Patrick Royce, Star Tribune. We'll see you next week, sir. Prince fan, uh, don't forget. And Prince right, enthusiast. Bye. All right, yeah. All right that's uh, wrapping with Royce here on the Mac.